Lord. Hello, fellow podcasters. I am Tykin, the Christorian, and my fellow co-host here, Marcus. Uh, hi, this is Mark, and I'm one half of the Christorians of Alaska. Mark, Marcus, whatever. Yeah, we're, we're here to basically talk about a lot of bullshit of our favorite degenerate of the internet. We're, we're stoked, man. We're stoked. Um, we, we've been wanting to do this for a while. We are thrilled to enlighten some of you, hopefully, on this on this phenomenon of the internet. If, if you're here, you, you, know know. Chris, you, you know who Chris Chan is. You know, all, that's all we got to say. We are all, Chris Chan. Yeah. Who doesn't know who Chris Chan is Chris Chan. at this point? Right, it's yeah, it's Chris Chan. Chan. It's the man yeah, with the bent duck. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, among a lot of other things. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's... that. I, I mean, I mean, he's... I mean, I, I, I don't think that I know of anybody as famous as he is who's just purely this internet sensation i mean he hasn't he has no wikipedia page no 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 uh, wikipedia wiki he has no wikipedia page he has no official website there are he's got an etsy man probably no official public uh released books about him yet he uh, he's, he's 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 first of all he's more interesting uh, than, than any than the most a people. lot of other people who, who who do have who do have books written about them exactly um and yeah I, I already called him a phenomenon and that's exactly what he is because I, I, I think you are a phenomenon for for you to be this well known about and discussed so broadly across the internet and with so many details about your personal life on the internet like that when you're not <laughs> even a real like fate and he's not even a like a real famous person, you know. Who no, you he's think not. You think of as famous, you think of Justin you think Bieber. Of actors, you think yeah. of musicians. Uh, yeah, here's exactly. Kanye you think Reeves. Of people like that. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, and of and, and of course, people know about their personal details, but we're talking about like a guy like that some, gives too much information about himself. <laughs> exactly. A lot of his a lot of his personal information. He's a lot of his personal information. And, and the only reason. The only reason why we know so much about him is because he went and divulged it himself. Yeah, it's just like that information overlord. Yeah. It's that information overlord. Does anyone know anyone no. else famous yeah. from Rutgersville, yeah. Virginia? Because I sure as hell don't. No, I, I mean, I, I might not. It's very likely I would not even be able to tell you where Rutgersville, Virginia is on a, on a map. So guys, we wouldn't even begin to guess where <laughs> Rutgersville, Virginia is if, if, if I had not, um, not at all. you know, di discovered this, that's the discovered. right word for you. One doesn't find, you don't find Christian, you discover him. You, you discover, discover him. Because he's not a person, he's an experience. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's an experience, all right. He's experience for everyone. Yeah. I, don't think, I think once you get no, back, no, once you go into no, Christian, you, you don't come back. It's like yeah. looking into the abyss and the abyss looks back at you. Right, right. I'm working right. on it. It's, it's, yeah, I'm working on it. We, <laughs> we're, we're, we, we want to, so hope, we hope to um, provide some of our insights. Uh, we, Chris Chan is obviously, uh, you know, we, we, this is going to sound weird, but I think you and I take this weird kind of like pride. It's, like a type of pride that we there take is, in knowing all these historical facts about our favorite guy on the internet. Yeah, there's a sense of pride there because because pride um, pride is passion, right? Pride I think, is passion. I think you and I have to be a little bit passionate and a little bit centric. full of pride to or give centric. a shit about some guy like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to be eccentric. You got to be a little bit crazy, be, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so, so. But, but, but his life his life has stories and a lot of you know that his life has sagas and the direction we've decided you and i decided uh to to take with this is that we wanted to uh you know discuss each saga as we go along maybe in chronological order maybe, maybe not, not but um but we, we're safe we're safe with the assumption that people watching this know who chris is 
and and it's our hope to just provide some insights on on specific subjects and and if you guys and, don't you know, know and have a good yeah. time that just yeah if you guys yeah, don't look know him, who look Chris him up, look him up. Yeah, look him up. Look him up right now. If you don't know who Chris Chan is, look him. Up. Yeah. There's also a yeah. great documentary um, out there called it, uh, the Comprehensive Documentary of Christian Weston Chandler by uh, Gino Samuel. That's... By by G by by YouTuber Gino Samuel and you great YouTuber uh, Super Sachumo also released a pretty good documentary on two, in 2014. Um, he was limited because he did it as a school project. Right. But there, there was some good stuff on there too, and it's a great. It's a, It was a great. It's a good introduction. It's a good introduction. It's a great overview, and yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, intro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a good like, introduction. Like, you know, That's that was my introduction to Christian. It was. It was such a good introduction. In fact, it was such a good introduction. Satrumo's 2014 documentary is. It was such a good introduction is that um, if somebody came up to me and they had never heard about a Chris Chan before, that's the link I would send them. What's a Chris Chan? <laughs> probably, probably, yeah. you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, material that you could be on the web to, to introduce yourself to Chris Chan. But if someone were to ask me on the street, hey, who's Chris Chan? You know, that's probably the link I would send them. I'll probably, um, I'll probably put anyway, something on the bottom too. Yeah for some general oversight Christian, yeah. but put some, sure, sure. Put some tools sure. there for you guys to explore and get demented with all of us. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, before we start this introduction, there's, uh, I think there's like four Bone different types of- If you're this, if you- Oh, I think you're breaking up with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, just speaking of overview, I was saying, uh, um, I, we're just going to overall go with the assumption that, that if you're watching this, if you're giving a shit about this, uh, you probably, you know who Chris Chan is. We're going with the assumption. Right. Um, but if you don't, there's, there's, there's resources out there for you. And, and you, we don't want to exclude you. We don't want to exclude people. We who want everyone to be included in into this. I know why we're here. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. deserves to know yeah. this, this, this guy. <laughs> this, everyone gets to ex everyone should get to experience Chris this guy Chan, this guy <laughs> this this wonder this, this phenomenon this, this sensation sensational yeah. phenomenon oh my god so so yeah there were there, there's there's like four levels of of being like a chris chan there, fanatic you know you've got there is you got your a walls you got your yep. weaves. You got yeah. your Christorians and your Christophers, Christopher your, philosophers. Your, 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 your Christologists. Christologists, yeah. Your Christologists, yeah. I guess, <laughs> I get, I guess, I guess a Christorian. If you if you call yourself a Christorian, which you and I do, um, you your specialty is documenting the history, obviously, of, of Christian. You know the phases of life which he went through. You know the major historical events that have transpired throughout his life. And he also I guess have a, a PhD Christo in Christology. Right, right. And a Christology is, you know, it's, it's a portmanteau of Chris Chan and a psychologist. It's somebody who could give you insight into, and I, and I guess you can be a little of both. Who says you, you can't can. be a little bit of I both? I mean, you could be everything. You could be anything. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you, could, you could be all four at a time. You could be all four yeah, at a time. Uh, yeah, but, but, Anyways, um, um, we we about a saga that uh, that we want to talk about a really really interesting saga, and it's a great subject that we chose for this uh, premiere um, <laughs> podcast that we're putting together here. Um, it's a subject that we hold near and dear to us. But right before we do that, just one more thing is. I think it'd be cool if we each uh, just uh, talked about how we were introduced to Chris and why we care about Chris so much. And we can keep right. it short. All um, right. Yeah, I, I, and I can go first since I brought since I brought up the idea. I can go first. Go um, for it. I, I, I was introduced to Chris through uh, his original Encyclopedia Dramatica page. Uh, oh. I won't describe Encyclopedia Dramatica. Everybody watching should know what encyclopedia that's pretty much how chris was first exposed mm -hmm. it was it was his first grand exposure there was an ed page written about him because it was in direct response to some 4chan users <laughs> who, who found his you know sonichu drawings to be really ridiculous 
and and <laughs> I, was, to the I was so <laughs> captivated by that ed page because yeah because i I, what captivated me was how they had so many personal details on some <laughs> random guy, uh, this it's random so autistic guy drawing comics on the internet. And I said, this is something I'm going to follow. I saw that and I said, this is something I'm going to follow. This is a man to inspire by. see this much um, um, juicy information <laughs> of you, the ordinary citizen. And I'm tired of following celebrities because that didn't, that, that kind of information is kind of available to everybody, right? Hey, Anybody right. who's got a Wikipedia page. Whereas, whereas if you're on e Encyclopedia Dramatica, it tends to be a little more isolated. So that's that's what makes it unique. So yeah, how, how were how were uh, how did you first uh, get interested in Chris Chan? So I came late to the party. I came towards the Tom's the Tom Girl saga where Chris would go into a GameStop and say, yeah. "Don't call anyone." And just spray the poor manager of GameStop. Um, yeah, I actually got introduced to him by yeah, pepper spray the assistant manager. Yeah. Pepper spray. The, <laughs> I got introduced to him by a another YouTuber that's called Review Tech USA. I don't know if you know him or not, but he he uploaded a yeah, news no, but he uploaded a news story about this guy named Chris Chan that decided to <laughs> pepper spray a assistant to GameStop for <laughs> Sonic's. Yeah. arm color and uh, right. you know after that it was over i became obsessed and then i watched the the smallest chew documentary and i got so interested i kept reading everything this uh highly uh because it's because it's unheard of right it's, it's unheard, unheard of. of for a, a grown <laughs> adult presumably to exactly. uh to assault a GameStop employee over over, over Sega coloring Sonic's tan arms. Color. It needs yeah. to be tan arms. So goddamn yeah. it, make it tan. So so here we here yeah. I am yeah. years later, still obsessing. Sonic's over this arms guy. are not blue. Blue, they're tan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh yeah. and, that's how I can introduce you to Chris. And yeah, and the last thing you said was was. Uh, you said that hey, we are Chris. These years that we've known about him, and we're still interested in this random guy. That that is just that's just proof of the longevity that what of one's interest in Chris. Like you think that just some random person, you read a few strange facts about him, you read a couple of bizarre stories here and there, and that's it. You move on with your life, but you don't. No, you don't. You really don't. You just fall into this Chris Chan rabbit hole, which which is why we're here today. <laughs> which right? never ends. Which never ends. No one knows how the story's going to end. It's yeah. like watching. But yeah, it's like watching a TV no. show. It's literally like yeah. watching a TV show. And so because it's just going because it's evidence that's why what's our end object of this discussion is uh take it away we're gonna be talking about we're, we're talking chris about and the megan saga that's right that's right the megan saga it's one oh, God. i wouldn't say it's i wouldn't say it's the first saga in chris's story it's probably not the first major saga in chris's story but it's the first one that we thought was worth it's worth it because it, it definitely about. it explains really one, everything yeah like i said earlier we're not we're not going in chronological order here. So if we have to go back, back in time from this one, we can do that. But you know, this, this is the Megan saga. And this is uh, the Megan saga. Well, Tyken, who's Megan? Oh, God. Who is it, Megan? Yeah, who is she? Who is this Megan? Who is this? Who is this girl? Who is this girl? Who, who is this is mysterious Megan? girl? Megan Schroeder, our local Virginia, uh, yeah, local Rexel, Virginia resident. That lived an hour away from Christian. Well, she lived in she lived in she lived in yeah she lived in Charlottesville. Charlottesville, and which so, is, which, which, yeah, which is which is like an hour away from Ruckersville, where Christian lives. But yeah, yeah, you can you can call Megan the closest thing that Chris will ever get to a legitimate sweetheart, a true and honest sweetheart, until he fucked probably, it up. Probably until he fucked it up. Probably. I mean, well, he, relationship that he ever, you know, every tendency to uh, to to disturb people and uh, and uh, drive them out of his life uh, through his own, um, you know, demonstration and behavior. Yeah. But but 
him him fucking up his relationship with Megan because this this happened when he was 25 years old which mm -hmm. like like Chris is like 40 now by the way it's, so this was, oh god 25 know, right? is considered pretty young in the story yeah, of Chris it is sadly it is. sadly his it life story better. starts in adulthood it really does I mean he did a lot of there's there's some childhood sagas that we may discuss in future podcasts. There's some high school years that we may discuss in future podcasts. But the real meat of the story of Chris actually begins in his twenties, which is kind of sad because, I mean, yeah, I, I, I you ever heard of a late bloomer? The curse is beyond late bloomer right now. He's gonna be a late I, boomer. I, yeah, yeah. This is this, he is. <laughs> He's. This, <laughs> This is the late bloom to the extreme when your yeah, life this, starts at the age of 25. But anyways, this is that um, to the extreme. This is got, what he meant by his comic. Yeah. yeah. You've got Megan Schroeder. You got Megan She's a Schroeder. young woman. She lived in a town an hour Virginia. away from Chris's. Yep. She lived in Charlottesville in Virginia, which was an hour away from Chris's hometown of Rutgersville. They met at a video game. A video game, boy, and card shop called the the mm -hmm. game place. The game they place. They met there and they were talking. Yeah, they were. They, they were met just, over what was it? A discussion of Pokemon cards. They there was a discussion Pokemon of Pokemon card cards. League, and he saw their heard her there for the first time. As a, I have a yep. quote here. For he met her for there. Yeah. Yeah. Go read it, my brother. Okay, are right, you guys ready? Ah, for the love I would travel a thousand miles just to be with her. Fortunately, she lives only about one hour from my house. Mm. And I met her once a week at a close to home social. Mm. This feeling it was, it still is ah, so pure and true. It was like, as if I was born to love her. When she smiles, I feel like I'm walking on sunshine. <sighs> as soon as I'm replaying, <laughs> replaying my smile, gazing into her eyes and her hair is the softest and most warm, tingly cloud night. <sighs> I feel like I'm a cloud jet. Christian, story of my current days. <laughs> Yeah, wow. <laughs> that 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 was an attempt by him uh, to be to be poetic, which I mean, yeah, he tries. Yeah. He tries. He's, he's he tries. At least he gives. I'll give him that. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. I I I think that I think that it shows that he did maybe at some point have genuine feelings. Well, her, uh, okay. Because, yeah, yeah. He had he game plays playing Pokemon cards in the summer of '04. Summer of so. Just so you know where we're at in the timeline. And I'm not gonna go too deep in the time. I'm not I'm not overly concerned about years and stuff like that. Yes, um, because the, that can be looked up. Um mm -hmm. but but yeah, but yeah, you can you can look it up. In summer of two thousand four is when you when he met her. Um God bless she, that you know, was initially really friendly with him. Which is something Chris wasn't uh, used they to. They became really great friends. Which is something right, Chris isn't exactly. used to. He took a warm liking to her. Yeah, she she was unusually receptive to him, and that's why he became so attracted to her. He was I'm, so attracted to her initially. He didn't even need a love sign. He didn't even need a female, love sign. First of all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need a love sign. Yeah, love yeah. Sign. Must, must be must be white. Must be white. Must Average be weight. Must have a job. Must have a car. No <laughs> yeah, smoking. Right. No drinking. I think he. Had, he had some height and weight requirements. On he did. Thing. He did. Yeah. What was it? it was like yeah. a five four to five eight. If I yeah, something correctly. like that. Like uh, under a hundred and thirty pounds. Please come talk to me. I'm very shy. <laughs> right. So this is Christian. Um, but uh, you know, we're really we're, we're just. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot to be discussed in the Megan saga. There's a lot oh, to be discussed, God. but uh, you know, if you want facts, facts can be read. Uh, yeah. There's the Wikipedia. That's right, not there's the Wikipedia. The, the, the Wikipedia, which you can go to on 
on sonichu.com. That's where all the meat is. And that's, you know, it, it's, it's where something you're gonna find that it. you and I read. That's where we get all our information. From. But, but, but what I think is important, what I think, what I think will make this podcast unique is just, just providing our insights. I think that uh, I can see that Chris really liked her. I can I, see that he really liked her. I need and, to know what the definition of like is for him, though, because, I, I mean, are we... I we think know he Chris. had romantic feelings. I, I think he had romantic feelings for her. That's what I mean by like. I think he, he had has romantic ro feelings for her. He had romantic uh, feelings for everyone, though. He might as well have romantic feelings for his blow-up doll at this point. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And you're not. And you know what? You're not. You're not wrong. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I agree. But, but, um, what's special about you know me saying that he had romantic feelings for her? This is before the blow-up doll. This is before all those other girls that, that, that he really just was dismissive about after, you know, he had his, uh, uh, you know, we, there, there were other women in Chris Chan's life. He never oh, had yeah. sex with any of them, but no, but, no, there, there, still were, never there has. were other women he was interested in that he basically just moved on one from the next to the next to the next. And, then, and, and so, but, but Megan was the first, Megan was the first, he, Megan was his first official sweetheart. major crush that he went into, yeah, that he went into a lot of detail about. He went to a, an extraordinary amount of detail. Um, but, but anyways, uh, you know, let's, let's just say that he had romantic feelings for her. And I think that's kind of unique and it kind of makes it more special that he fucked things up with her. Especially feel... the fact that she genuinely liked him back as a friend. Yeah, What's he did. Is, she did. He yeah. liked her romantically. She she genuinely liked him back as a friend, but he went and fucked it up by making like unwanted creepy unwanted advances, advances over and over again. He, oh, Megan, your hair smells who, so good today. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, anyways, he, he uh, simple friendship at the card shop, video game shop, whatever you want to call it, at the game place. At the game place. Um, simple friendly gestures. It turned into creepy smiles towards her. He started touching her. He started uh, saying sexual things to her. She basically told him back off, and she was polite about it, wasn't she? Wasn't she polite about it? She was with? very polite. I mean, I can only imagine yeah. Chris to say something like, "Ah, oh, Megan, would you like to see my navy and my orange soda?" <laughs> <laughs> the reality is that we don't know what type of sexual things that <laughs> yeah. that Chris said, but during that time, I I so, still think Chris was pretty naive when it came to. And we may and we may never know. Um, no, we know. There was one point. There was at one point a few years ago where Megan was openly, Megan was at one point openly talking to the public about the kind of things that Chris would say and do to her. But she's she's like cut off now. She's like she's living done. off the grid she's or something done. like that. She went to the yeah, backwoods she, of Virginia. She's disabled also. Yeah, she's disabled all social media. She doesn't talk to people about Chris anymore. And you know what? Do you blame her? Do you blame? No, her? no, I really don't. I feel like most people that get involved in Chris's life yeah. are ruined. Yeah. Right. Which is yeah, interesting. You know, directly. You know, yeah. you and I are obviously very involved in Chris Chan's life. Just oh, well, of course. But the difference. So here's the difference yeah. between uh, Weens and uh, Christorians, right? Weens will actually try to get their way to Weasel End to be in the saga, while Christorians kind of just watch absolutely. what happens. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so. there are people who started as innocent Christorians, people who just wanted to follow Chris and be fascinated by him, like you and I. But but they went too far, right? They went a little too far down the rabbit hole. They were doing things like calling him, uh, sending him gifts, uh, sending him mail, uh, yeah. following him on Facebook, yeah, uh, and and like messaging <sighs> him to go and visit him or her. Uh, you know, he, he he's a transgender, so I don't know whatever you want to call him, him or her. Which is another theory for another day. But um um, but anyways, but exactly, yeah, yeah, we'll, we, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll leave that one alone for now. Well, that's that's a uh, whole Megan, can of worms. Megan Schroeder. So. Oh yeah, yeah. We thing, don't want to open that right now. No, yeah. no, not now. So the thing that made Megan different from everyone else is that every time Chris goes to a different sweetheart, he actually forgets them, like as if his memory was wiped of them. So he never goes back there and talks about, oh, ah, yeah. remember Julie, or do you remember Casey, or Liquid Casey, Liquid Chris. Yeah. He doesn't go back and he just, but Megan's the only one that no, he actually goes no. back and talks about mostly because Chris blames her for ruining his life. 
And the the reason I yeah. think yeah. that the reason I think that uh, Chris blames Megan is because Chris thought that Megan would be the only chance that he would ever get at getting the boyfriend, free girl, sweetheart, happy ending, having Crystal as a yeah. child. And so, that was all swatted from him in his point of view. So that's why he's yeah. ultra angry at Megan still. Yeah. So Chris is, Chris, you're, you're saying, you're saying that Chris's frustration with Megan is, 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 it reveals so much of how big his ego is, how entitled oh, yeah. he feels that the fact that Megan didn't like marry him fucked up his life as if it was her responsibility. Like, say, present for a second, I'm Chris and you're Megan. Okay, I'm Chris, you're Megan. Hey, okay. Megan, if you're not going to be with me and you're not going to be my sweetheart, when I had prophesied, when it was it destiny was for you to be with me. Goddamn you bear. Screwed up, <laughs> you screwed up my destiny by rejecting me, and therefore it's all your fault that my life all your is in fault. shambles. All your yeah. fault. No, that's and, and exactly that, that's, what it is. No, that's how he thinks. That's how he thinks. It shows you how self-centered he is yeah. about how, like, and I'm sorry to use this term. I'm sorry to use this term, but how sexually aggressive he is. Uh, a lot of the times when he would put on the unwanted advances on him, put the moves on Megan, try flirting with her and creep her out and stuff like really really creeping her out with his flirting right, um, right he thought that he expected her to be receptive to all that because he's the gentleman trying to yeah he's the gentleman clearly court his a, a lover yeah he's trying it's a courtship he saw it as a courtship and her not being receptive to that courtship well that's not his fault that she's not receptive it's all her fault that she's being a bitch i know right what you is know, wrong he, with you? Why he, would when, your friends on me? Yeah, when, when she, <laughs> and every time, exactly, yeah, exactly. He, Why you know, would your friends on me? He doesn't realize that he put himself in the friend zone by, by, yeah, by, by not realizing that you know Megan's not really any of you, bro. Just okay, okay. Like. Let, he, he let's get be the fair here. He didn't that get the picture. Megan wasn't gonna unfriend zone him to begin with. He was put in the friend zone. No, the very, no. there was like no attraction. What? I can say that I can say this though about in defense in oh, Chris's defense. Yeah. Okay. Megan did lead him on for a little bit by you know oh, kind oh, of extorting, oh, yeah. kind of Go extorting ahead. make uh, Chris to buy her so, stuff through his tuck book. Now now that now that we've discussed Chris and all the bad things he did, especially the unwanted creepy flirting, it, it, it it's it, let, let's talk about Megan for a bit. Is she at fault? No, but do I think she's innocent? No. Um, also, no, and I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry to say that. Do no, that's. I want to make. I, I want to make one thing very, very clear, Tyke, and, and you're and you're gonna agree with me. I want to make thing, one thing very clear before we talk about how Megan wasn't completely incident, uh, innocent. It's not. <laughs> it is not her fault for reject Chris. No. She did the right thing by rejecting Chris and telling him he's creepy. Let me get that out of the way right 100%. now. 100%. I do not expect Megan. Yeah. But but anyways, um, let's talk about why Megan isn't innocent. Number one, uh, Chris was sending her gifts. She was extorting him, right? Right. Yeah, that's exactly it. And She could have told him to stop, but she was, she was using... The tugboat. She was using his romantic like for her as a tool... To get him to send her, and that's kind of manipulative. Kind Don't of. do that. Uh, is it is it Chris's fault for being? Is it Chris's fault for being delusional, thinking that uh, uh, showering her with gifts would make her uh, sleep with him, fall oh, in yeah, love absolutely. with him, anything like that? Yeah, he, it's his fault for being delusional. But well, it doesn't but mean but the, the the fact the fact that she extorted him and used and and knew she knew that he liked her. She knew that yeah, he liked she her very knew. much. Obvious. Obviously, she knew, right? And, right. and she used that to get him to buy her gifts, and that's kind. Of, that's kind of me. It's that's extortion. Kind of it's extortion. That's fine. As look, yeah. look, Marcus. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like you and I. We've been we've been around the block a lot for quite a bit, and you know, normally if yeah, you know, dude, if we're hey, if we're attracted yeah. to someone, we're going to we're gonna you know give them some incentive, right? It's just kind of how it is. Yeah, bro. Let's it, let's but let's talk. About, Let's talk about girls for a second, man. Let's talk about girls for a second. Let's talk about would girls. Would you buy a woman an expensive? Would you buy a woman an expensive gift whom you haven't slept with yet? No, no, clearly not. 
you haven't even slept with her. She she refuses to hold your hand. She's going on one single day with you. Are you going to start going out and buying gifts with her, hoping that <laughs> that those gifts will win her over? Are nah, you going to do that? Are you going to nah, do that? That's extortion, man. No, no, me, me that's, neither. Me that's neither. called a. That's yeah. called what do we call that? That's called being a simp these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, he would. Chris he is was the original simp. simp. He was the original that, simp. Yeah. He's yeah, Chris. Simp. He was the original. The original yeah, simp. Chris's act of like buying from simp. But but um, you know, Me Megan is not entirely innocent because of that. And and uh, uh, I also wanted to discuss as far as Megan's um, you know, lack of innocence and all this is, you know, keeping in mind that we're not blaming Megan. We're just no, talking about why she's not entirely innocent. Um, she 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 she. she The earlier wanted events, he hadn't been kind of excusable. Well, not really. I don't know if excusable is the word. But anyways, it was the beginning phases of Chris being creepy towards her that was starting to drive her away. Uh, uh, at that point, she was just saying, interested in with you, come full sexual predator mode yet. Um, she told him, she, the reason, one of the earliest reasons she cited for rejecting him was that she told him she was asexual. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with being asexual. Not at all. Yes. If you identify yours, if you identify as an asexual, yeah, that's fine. That's. Fine. But here's the thing. Uh, that was a lie, though. The reason why it was it's not a okay, lie, and the reason why Matt makes her not entirely is that it was, it was a blatant. It was a blatant lie because she told him that she didn't want to go out with him because she was asexual. But she, but she went out right with around. Else. She turns right around. At, uh, yeah, and goes on on goes on a date with a guy, a romantic date, and says that she likes him and wants to like go on a date with this guy. A date is like a, you know, an ex an, an, an asexual doesn't go on a date. I'm sorry, if you go on a date, you're not an asexual. No, an not asexual right. hangs out with friends. Right. An asexual hangs out with friends. An asexual can have relationships with people. I'm not saying asexual don't have, but but she says she's asexual to Chris. And then turns right around, go admits that she is attracted to him, like romantically, physically, sexually attracted to him. She says he's good looking and all that, and she wants to date her, and he and she wants to like get to know him better and stuff like that. So, it, does that sound like an asexual to you, Tyken? No, no, it doesn't. And the thing with when it comes to right. sorry, sorry about the dog. The thing that comes with uh, Chris, yeah, Kodiak. Hey, Kodiak, quit it, <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, the thing when it comes. To this is obviously going to be edited out. So the thing when it comes to Megan, when she said that she was asexual to Chris, I feel like that's... You don't have to edit it out, man. Dogs are cool, man. Maybe I'll not. Well, this, at least I'll add some charm to this. So the thing with uh, Megan... But, uh, anyways, moving, it, moving on. Yeah. Well, it, the thing is that I feel like she said that just not to hurt Chris's feelings. I mean, the thing is that Chris is... Uh, Megan's entitled to give a reason, even if it's a lie, and she has the right yeah. to date whoever she wants to. I mean, to oh. me, it, it was a better way than I, I'm saying, not saying straight she up. doesn't. I'm not. Not to say that she doesn't have a right to reject him. She's got every right to reject him. I mean, she was, I mean, we've already established that she did the right thing by not going out with this guy. Oh, because, yeah, 100%. You know, she's a girl and she can go out with whoever she wants. And, and especially if it's, you know, if it's, especially if it's some, you know, weirdo at the card shop hitting on you and you're telling him no and he's not getting wearing pictures, Pokemon badges. Yeah, absolutely uh, reject him. But wearing but, his Pokemon vest. <laughs> right. But, but you don't, you don't. You, you don't you don't find you don't find it objectionable you know that that she that she basically lied to him about being asexual to, to just just to get him to leave uh, her alone but, i don't you know honestly why I... did she why why do you why do you why do you think that she would go and say that she's asexual but then turn right around and then uh, tell him that she started going out with this other guy and that she likes him and is interested in him you know like physically uh uh the do you think do you think that she just had do you think had to come up with the reason right on the spot do you think that's why she told him that that she was asexual and she had to come say, up with the reason on the spot i do want to say that because i can tell you right it. now um i think chris is the kind of guy 
I think the Chris is the kind of guy who doesn't take no for an answer. Number one, he doesn't take no for an answer. You all, no, you are probably not. already ascertained that. Um, but he's he's the kind of guy who not only doesn't take no for an answer, he wants a reason. And yeah, he, he wants a reason. Even with the reason, he still not going to take no for an answer, but demands. I demand to know why you. I'm Chris Chan, and you will. I uh, demand uh, no. an answer for you not. Right, right. Not, for for you not becoming my sweetheart. <laughs> and that's how he would probably say it too. No, and then he would scream, no! Okay, but, but. <laughs> so, okay, okay, I would say so, this. But overall, <laughs> let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about overall, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, if we're talking about the overall, overall, the one thing I think Mega did really wrong was extort Chris. She, I yeah. mean, Chris was simping. Megan knew that Chris was simping, but Megan did it. Was like, okay, that's fine. You can simp all over me, but you're not going to get anything. Which do not do that. That's not yeah, how you should no, play. We're, we're... Yeah, dude. On both no, sides. On both sides. You can't go. You, you can't simp. See, um, see, like. A woman's not like this. Uh, a woman's not like a unicorn. This, this prize machine where you right. like, in, yeah, like insert tokens into and like the the the, the prize. Which it's is, not you know, case, Sex with Megan <laughs> uh, com comes out exactly. Uh, oh boy, uh, he, he really came thought out. that by buying her all this stuff, he would win her over. But he really believed that the more stuff that he, the more money he spent on her, the more direct gifts and cash that he sent her away the closer it would bring him to hooking up with her. And she took advantage of that. And I think that's wrong. But you, you and I are absolutely on the same page that the whole extortion thing is way bigger business than the asexual thing. Way bigger business. Oh, yeah. Hands oh, yeah. Up. Chris, I like I like yeah. people said, Megan can get whatever reason she wants to Chris. Megan can go out, can go out with whoever, whoever she wants. You know, it's not Chris's... Uh, Chris is, doesn't have a yeah. place to objectify. She, he can't be like, I object uh, under the circumstances that you were supposed to be my sweetheart. I, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just think it's slightly, very, very, very slightly fucked up that she lied to him about being asexual. Because the the, the thing is that hurt him kind of. I, I, I really, I really think that he wouldn't have been as hurt um, if she had just, just left it as no but well, <laughs> once again maybe that was justified maybe that was justified because of the fact that chris was being so pushy that's what i'm saying you know i mean if, look if rejection sucks. Really, really had, yeah i mean it sucks for anyone I've, you've been rejected yeah. i've been rejected you know but the difference between you and me and chris yeah. is that we can take a rejection and just go go along with our lives chris on the other hand makes a whole picture yeah. about it which we'll, we'll get to <laughs> so so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, after after the whole rejection. Um let's talk about what finally fucked up their friendship. Finally uh, fucked I, it up. I wanna talk about I wanna talk about the space I wanna talk about this famous image. Chris Chris was an artist, right? Would you describe Chris as an artist? He was an artist of sorts. Oh he god had certain <laughs> drawings. He's like yeah, the modern to, Leonardo da Vinci right here. Yeah, exactly. It's he, a, he had, he's Leonardo he made, da Vinci with Crayola. <laughs> right? <laughs> he he drew a lot with marker and pencil and, 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 and things, but yeah, his, his drawings were crude, to put it lightly. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, not I'm actually not gonna go into to I'm actually not gonna go into critiquing his art skills because that's not the point. I'm not gonna go into critiquing his artistic uh, skills. But it but sucks. he made crude he made he made he made crude drawings. Where's the belly button? <laughs> he, he made he, he made he made crude drawings of not only his Sonic True characters, about him his himself. favorite video game characters, but he included himself in some of his drawings. He rendered he uh, he artistic did. versions of himself, <laughs> and he rendered artistic versions of people he knew. He, re special he dog. rendered, <laughs> yeah. He he drew picture. He knew, he drew images of people that he cared about. People in his life. Is that people life size? Such, people such as Megan Schroeder. 
Right. So right. Uh, let's let let let's show the audience this picture. I, I can't. I, oh God. I can't talk about it anymore unless we see it. Let's just let, look at it. Let's just look let at me, it. Let's uh, just talk about it. I don't want to talk anymore. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna shut up here for a second. All right. You know the picture I'm talking about. You know the picture I'm talking about. <laughs> the Go picture. ahead and pull it up. I'm pulling this picture up as soon as my crappy computer can uh, <laughs> handle the the artistic rendition. Yeah, ah, here it is. Oh shit! It's not even censored. I'm probably gonna have to censor yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, we'll go ahead and go 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 ahead and screen share it first. Okay, one second. And, 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 and let's just leave it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. The <laughs> let, let us let us observe. Let's let observe. Us... <laughs> That that would be my dog. That would that would be Kodiak. Good boy, Kodiak. Good boy. He's he's protecting the home front. And uh, here it is, guys. The uh, ladies and gentlemen, she came for quick. <laughs> she came for CWC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is so, it. folks, folks, this is uh, okay. You know. I, I, I can't. I can't, man. I can't. Oh, there's the Tyken, belly button. <laughs> Tyken, what are we looking at? What are we looking oh, at, man? What are we looking at? God, we are looking at Crayola magic right now. <laughs> at yeah. its finest. Uh, <laughs> where do I begin with this? Okay, so for full disclosure, this is about the time where the, the Cycle Dramatica came up apart and people were drawing his character Rosa Chu with a pickle and pickle means dicks in uh, Christian terms. So he actually made something called the overload where he would actually put fun facts about him as well as drawings of rule 34 to counteract the trolls. Yeah, so some <laughs> trolls, some trolls on the internet, both on Encyclopedia Dramatica and the 4chan website, they were spreading rumors about Chris being gay. Yeah, yeah. And they were make they were making drawings of Chris participating in gay sex acts. Okay, gay sex acts. This, yeah, the, the, this enraged him. He was furious, furious when he saw these furious. <laughs> when he saw these rumors. So his response, get this, his response was to uh, uh, say. Hey, I'm not gay, and I'll prove it. I'll prove I have to you boy. that I'm not gay. I got All right? Playboy. I've, yeah, I've got. <laughs> I've got Playboy. I got Playboy. <laughs> I read them. I read them. Uh, but but this drawing that you're all seeing is oh uh, my god. Chris, you know, inserting his digits in the Megan <laughs> basically, and uh, you're, you're, it's, it's watching her uh, watching her uh, be pleasured by Chris. Uh, my god. He drew that. He drew that in direct response to trolls calling him gay, drawing him as a gay person uh, doing gay things, and and uh, he he was basically he basically used this as like a ha ha that, oh. that, that'll show him you know I'm not gay <laughs> because a gay person wouldn't be you know uh, doing this to my fe I'm my sorry, female <laughs> friend Megan right okay okay so. So, yeah, I just want to. I, I think I've, Marcus. I, I've I, I just enough. need to know this. I need to yeah. know this. Yeah. So yeah. When, when you do this act on a person, do you do this at the same time? You're just like. Yeah, yeah. I think you do. I think you do. You just like. <laughs> Does that? <laughs> and, and his fingers, his fingers really aren't even in there. He's no, he's not. high fiving it. He's like he's high fiving. Stop that sucker. Right. <laughs> But, but yeah anyways Bob, they, they... i'm sorry i'm not watching your porn i swear right, so... <laughs> all right anyways have have you all had a chance to see this picture great, great. oh god I... All, I mean it that was on sonic that was on the uh quickie the chris wiki the chris quickie the, the sonic uh you can all look at that if you didn't get a, a good look at it um it's there forever and you can look at it for as long <laughs> as never go life. away but, Lumberjack okay. Bob can't tear this one down. We established that he drew that in response to trolls. Um, and okay, to be fair, so yeah, the thing is that when uh, this is all Chris's fault, and I'm gonna tell you exactly yeah. why. The trolls originally yeah. thought this was his fictional crystal, uh, character, Crystal Weston Channel, which was yeah. her uh, his sister. But then he goes, then he goes it's like on daughter. a tangent. 
Crystal, Crystal daughter. Crystal Western sorry. Chandler is is Crystal's daughter. imaginary daughter that he puts in his comics. The Which, trolls originally said that that girl that was being, you know, yeah. high fived in her is Crystal in a good yeah, uh, Crystal, and and they were they were accusing him of incest. But yeah. prior to that, they were also calling him gay and drawing yeah, him, you know, exactly. participating in homosexual activity. And um, uh, so after. Yeah, Chris helps all this video of him getting really angry and doesn't curse on me, I mean, ah, right? And yeah. he goes, by the way, that girl, it's a crystal. It's Megan. Megan, yeah. <laughs> it's Megan. He states in a video that he put on YouTube, he, Chris went on YouTube in response to some trolls after this picture started floating around on the internet. Some trolls were saying that that was his daughter. Um, he took offense to that. And he said, by the way, that's not that's, Crystal. It's Megan. Megan. It's Megan. And Megan saw this video. And, oh, uh, shit. It's and, over. And her, she was, how do I? Bamboozled, flabbergasted, she appalled. appalled. She, was, she was appalled when she realized that Chris had made a drawing of himself participating in a sex act with her and put it on the internet for the whole world to see and then elaborated didn't didn't just leave it at that by the way didn't just leave it as a vague uh, crude oh. drawing oh. went on youtube and elaborated mm -hmm. that it was her it's naked he, uh he didn't he never he never bothered to ask her hey can I pick? Can I put this portrayal of you on the internet? Can I put and your portrayal of you on the internet? Uh, this is for an art project. Say, hey, it's for art uh, class. Hey, Megan, I, I made this like drawing of you. Do you mind if I go ahead and share it with you and maybe share it on the? No, 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 no attempt to run this by her in any way. Just puts this out there, says it's her, and she's abhorred. Abhorred. She's abhorred uh, by it. Yeah. I would be abhorred she, about it. Right? Because I mean, yeah, I mean come look, on, Chris. Look, at on, Chris, least you can't put this. <laughs> You can't put the stuff on the internet, Chris. And then, and then the the title of it, he titled. She, what did she he came title for, this? She this came message? for CWC. Yeah. She came for CWC. And okay, here's the thing too. Look, as we both know, you know, people model nude all the time. But for, for God's yeah. sake, can you, if you're gonna make me like this, uh, this object of desire, can you at least make me look good and not with crayons, please? <laughs> so I'm just like. So what's what um th this put a oh, so there was a, it put a dent. friendship. It put a huge dent, but oh yeah, I should point I should point out that at the time she found out about this drawing, and at the time she found out about the video where he goes into detail about the drawing, saying it's Megan. It's um, Megan. <laughs> at that point, at that point, please understand, all of you. Please realize, please realize that their friendship had already been deteriorating oh yeah and this was after this was after the creepy advances mm -hmm. this was after her lying to him about being asexual and beginning to leave him alone this mm -hmm. was after her extorting him a little bit and having him send her gifts here and there and there's there's uh, actually one more thing that we didn't mention and that's uh the papa the rapper contest that chris wanted to win so he can take megan with him. yeah with uh with but her we could, you know yeah yeah and, and the parappa the rapper contest you know um you and that freakazoid video um, <laughs> um well uh, yeah that i mean the so he lost the this parappa the rapper contest to, to some guy named adam stackhouse and the adam, adam stackhouse, stackhouse is another saga but it's worth talking about i think it's worth talking about in the future because it connects what you'll right. what you'll notice about a lot of these sagas is that they connect they intertwine they intertwine i will say yeah. this i'll say this part about a little bit of that basically yeah, sure, chris sure, chris sure. chris lost and Chris was, went to Megan and was like, I wanted to bring you with me to 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 this convention so we can have her sex at time. And uh, yeah. Megan was like, you know, even if you did want, I want to go. <laughs> so yeah. um, can I, I can I just read some excerpts from emails sent between Megan and Chris about her reaction to specifically that that. Uh, that Michelangelo uh, level. Uh, but, <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah, some, some 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 Da Vinci tier. Uh, uh, some Da Vinci tier art, shit art, there. Art, 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 artwork. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna go into our college uh, classes. 
Watch out, guys. Megan says to Chris, I just don't know what to say now. I'm very scarred by that image and it will never leave me. And I can't decide what's worse, the image in general or the fact that you intentionally drew it and gave it to the webmaster for that site that you hate I... so much. Okay, and then, uh, okay, check this out. And then they, they go back and forth. And then, um, so this is, this is what really fascinates me. I don't know why I'm so fascinated about this part, but this is the most fascinating aspect I find about the whole she came for CWC fiasco, this drawing. Chris blames Megan. She does, doesn't, he does. Chris, Chris doesn't accept any wrongdoing on his part for drawing it. He doesn't apologize for drawing it and, and drawing sexually explicit images of her and then uh, putting it on the internet. He blames her and he says that it's her fault for being scarred by it because she doesn't watch enough porn. I'm gonna say that once again. He blames Megan for not watching enough porn, and therefore it's her fault that she's so scarred by it. Because and the if thing she is had too, exposed herself to more porn in the past, she wouldn't be exposed by such images. Which, by the way, is he completely up. missing it's the point? Up. Is he com is he completely missing Absolutely. the point when he said that? So here's so the thing too. This. Even Chris, let, he was giving. On, on. All right, all right. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to read. I just want to read the email, and then we can talk. I just want to read what he says to her in response. Okay. okay. Chris thinks she was scarred because she doesn't know much about sex. Okay. <laughs> he says to her in the response to that last email I was reading you, he says, I understand, Megan. You may or may not have had much exposure to sexual images as I've had. So the idea of a hand job, which was the act drawn here as part of outer course <laughs> versus intercourse, was oh a surprise to you. I'm sorry. If it helps to put things in perspective, I can recommend finding information on the internet through this oh educational website God. I found through adamandeve.com. <laughs> and he's, he sends her porn links. He says she <laughs> needs to watch the 40-year-old virgin. He says, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. You don't watch enough porn. That's, one of, that's like apologizing when you're like, oh, I'm sorry you're so upset. As you know, it's like when a coworker once said to me, I, I apologize that you got offended. But all this shit that you said, you keep it to yourself. That's just too much. That's, yeah. that's what Chris did. That's what Chris did right there. Yeah. Basically, basically. And it's like, yeah. I, I, the, the audacity of this guy <laughs> that he would actually blame Megan yeah. for her nativity, right? Which, right? You know, yeah. I think Megan so, was around the block more than he was. So, so what happened after this? Well, uh, because see, we got, we got, we got to wrap it. We got to wrap this up. So, uh, but but I, I do want us to share our our, our thoughts on on this Megan thing because real, real quick, we'll real, real quick, we'll, we'll we'll give this a satisfactory conclusion. Um, that this discussion about what happened next, anyways. Uh, Megan was uh, she became more and more detached from Chris after she realized how cold he is. How. Mm -hmm how unapologetic he is, how unremorseful he is about this whole situation. I think he sent her a few more gifts after this. She asked for uh, some more shit. She asked him some like money or some shit crap. like that. Yeah, it was like some it was some crap some some crap on eBay that she wanted him to buy for her and he bought it for her, but after that they they stopped talking basically. Yeah. They stopped talking after this. Yeah. So the thing is that even in those emails um Megan was willing to give Chris another chance again. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that's oh, yeah. the thing, which I actually commend her. I commend her for that because yeah. it and, takes strength. It, it takes does. strength it to want to forgive somebody after something like that, you know? Yeah. So I, I can, I definitely yeah. commend her that because she actually tried. And then but, Chris was explaining porn to her, and that's what ended well, it all. <laughs> How did how did uh, how do you judge Chris's reaction to her willingness to forgive him? Did he abuse it or did he genuinely take it to heart and try to better himself? Which do you uh, think he did? You know, it's Chris, so he definitely abused it. That's yeah. That's so just what he so is. The, this by the, this should not come as a surprise to anybody at this point. This should not come as a surprise to anybody. Megan was leaving it on the table. Hey. We can talk. Let's try to rekindle. We can try and rekindle our friendship. She she says something along the lines of that after this whole she came for CWC drawing thing. And then Chris basically moves forward and not moves forward. 
Chris reverts back to his old creepy self and starts putting sexual advances on her again, even when she told him to stop and that she just wants to be friends. Chris is still not getting the picture, and this is what completely drives Megan away for good. Like for good. Well, the one yeah. thing that the thing that drove Megan away is Chris saying, "Well, if I didn't put in my sexual frustrations into this drawing, I don't know what I would do." Right. And that that ended it. That was like, yeah, oh, game over, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> it's and, over. Uh, you know, Tyken, what, what also, that also reminds me, you know, we're talking about how the Megan saga ended. Unlike other sagas, unlike other sagas, which continue to trickle on, the Megan saga ended abruptly. It ended when Megan refused to communicate with Chris. Uh, very rarely do you see a Chris Chan saga just ending just like that. Just That's like, true. Like open and shut. Like, like a railroad. Yeah. Like a railroad track just coming to an abrupt end, just like that. It's and, over. and, you know, that's the last Chris ever heard from Megan. Is, well, I is, think uh, I definitely think the reason why it came, it was so abruptly, was because Megan was actually real. Yep. And that's uh, what, that so was the difference. We're gonna discuss in future podcasts about how a lot of Chris's sweethearts were actually trolls. Were trolls. Um, he believed they were real girls. Right. He yeah, believed God. they were real girls. So that's why we're, you're gonna hear us refer to them as real girls because to Chris they were real. They were to real. Chris, they were real women. So they were effectively real at the time. But absolutely good point. Unlike a lot of, uh, unlike a lot of troll uh, people pretending to be women, uh, you know, trolling Chris, Megan was a real girl. He Megan had hung out with girl. her in real life. And I want and to say he that. Had deeply disturbed the real girl. And, deeply and disturbed. For all, you, for all you weirdos out there who knows what happens when <laughs> everyone's you a weirdo here. <laughs> a girl, yeah. She's going to stop talking to you, bro. Yeah, she's gonna stop talking to you. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, don't even try. Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. I wonder what Chris's tender would probably look like. That's what I wonder. Uh, I mean, he's gonna have probably photos of his dog. I, I imagine he's gonna have photo. <laughs> if he wanted a long lasting Tinder profile that wouldn't get flagged by like the admins and shit, yeah, I mean, I, I, not. Not to say you're wrong. I wouldn't pass. I wouldn't put it past him to upload that it's kind of duck. shit on his Tinder profile. Um, but but you know he's. Duck. Oh, you know what? He's gonna have pictures of himself in like his, his bedroom, Sonic shoe. surrounded by surrounded by all like his toys and shit, all his yeah. transformers and everything. Um, you know his transformers that he spent his welfare on. <laughs> The tongue he's like guys. The tongue yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he he. At, at one point, he was complaining about like how he's not getting enough money and welfare and shit like that. He calls it his monthly tugboat. His but monthly he was tugboat. Month, he's, he's not. Oh, I'm not getting enough in welfare. But then when he does get his welfare check, he spends it on like toys, like transformers and all that and toys. Hot wheels, hot you, gotta wheels get, you gotta get all the shit. Shit. Yeah. All shit. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh. I, I love the Megan saga. I love that it's, you know... Megan was up at the start. You called it open and shut. That's a perfect way to describe it. It was like reading a book. There was an, there was an exact end to it. A lot of sagas, you don't really know where the saga ends. You don't no. really know where to... Because they Megan, actually mesh together. Yeah, exactly. They, they yeah, they intertwine. They because they're, they're, all the same, they're all the same trolls. So yeah, they, yeah. they keep going yeah. different personas. Exactly. Whereas with Megan, we can see we uh, there. You can do forensic. You can do like forensics <laughs> and, and Chris, Present, Christor, forensics. historical, historical archaeology on oh, the shit. God. And then you can you can you can determine pretty easily uh, when exactly Chris stopped talking to Megan, and well, rather Megan stopped talking to Chris. Um, Clo, because uh, we got to wrap this up, right? Yeah. Let's let's go yeah. with our closing uh, thoughts of the the, the glorious thoughts, mega thoughts. Food, how about how about some food for thought? You know, we'll we'll end we'll end each of these with some food for thought. Uh, All right. some juicy stuff. We'll end each of these with food food for thought. My food for thought for this one is um what do you think Chris would say to Megan now in 2020 if she could meet him? If say for example they they facilitated some kind of a way for them to start talking again. What do you think they'd say to each other? How would their relationship be? What would she say to Chris in 2020? Well, the problem it, was... it, it, I mean, it's been so it's been so many years. Do they even know each other anymore? It's been so many years. Well, well Chris is now a female for one, and he's not even Chris anymore. He's Sonic too. So 
All right, with the dimensional word. With the, but, the, know, he, he was he was Christine. He was Christine. Uh, okay, in theory, if anyway. Christine was not Chris and or Christine was not Sonic True, I I still think that he would blame her for everything, and actually yeah. go like, "You dirty Jew." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, right. I, uh, I feel dirty for dirty saying Jew, that, but he, the, he would say the, that. The, the, the assistant manager of the game place where he'd hang out with Megan, he Michael was, uh, his, name, his, name, his, name, his name was Michael Snyder. And which I is guess German. Chris, which Chris is Chris German. Really, exactly. Chris didn't really appreciate that he may have had Jewish origins, Jewish ancestry, and, and he's, uh, I, I mean, he he thought being anti-Semitic and calling him a dirty Jew was funny because he saw it on South Park. Oh like, God, Parker, would say it. And Chris mm -hmm. is very impressionable. But, very but impressionable. Anyways, yeah, so, so yeah, I, I mean, is that is that all the thoughts you had on, you know, a theoretical uh, rekindling of friendship between? I don't Chris think and there could ever be a rekindling of friendship. The thing is that's, that that's why that's why it's a high. I sure, mean, and I agree. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't. But but if it did. How would it they would, talk to each other? How would, how would it oh, go? Oh, hi, Megan. <laughs> it's me again. I, I want to know, do you still like the Pokemon cards? Would you like to join my dimensional merge so you can meet with Sailor Moon? <sighs> and, then, yeah. and then Megan would be like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty spot on. I think I think that he would just confuse her with with all the things that he's into now. Um, he's into so so much, much shit. Really, thank you, vague, idea, guys. Thank you, idea, guys. Like, yeah, he's he thinks that universes are colliding. He thinks that uh, we're living in some kind of alternate dimension, stuff like that. Stuff that Megan probably wouldn't care to listen to. No, but and um, the thing the thing with Chris right now is that he's so deluded yeah that i don't think that unlike when he was 25 to now when he's 40 he lost his mind yeah so yeah, i think i think the years of unchecked uh untreated mental illness have have taken its toll yeah um I mean, you could, I, I think, I think that if you do a brain scan on Chris and, you know, I'm not trying to go all psychiatry here, but if you do a brain scan on Chris, I know, I know a little bit about the brain. I know a little bit, and I know that uh, unchecked and untreated mental illness can deteriorate the brain. So if you, I, I'm kind of, I'd be kind of interested to see a brain scan of Chris when he was 25 and Chris now, and you'd probably see a big difference. Probably so. Um, what do I think uh, Chris and Megan would what interact with each other if, if, if they would interact in 2020? I think that, I think that, um, I think that 12, 13 years of not speaking to someone that you were close friends with um, close. would be extraordinarily awkward. It would be socially awkward. Not, not to say that either of them, Chris is socially awkward and Megan was known to be socially awkward too, but the situation itself, the situation itself would be so socially awkward that two socially awkward people trying to interact, there wouldn't be much said. I don't think right. there would be much said. I don't think that Chris would go into a lot of details about cat. I don't think Chris would have the social aptitude to explain his life and uh, coherently no, explain not. to Megan. Oh, here, Here's what I've been up to these past 13 years. Why don't you? Uh, here's all the stuff. Catch her up, and if she catches him, I don't see that happening, man. Just got uh, to my encyclopedia to Radica to get yeah. catch up. <laughs> I don't see them up. being able to to speak in full sentences to each other. I think it'd just be too awkward, and I think it'd be very quiet. Well, maybe uh, Megan has yeah. matured over the years too. She might not be. I'm sure she awkward. has. And, and and plus, she wasn't, as far as we know, as far as we know, she wasn't mentally ill like Chris was. No, she wasn't. She was just a yeah. quiet person. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sure that her social skills have probably went up immensely since when yeah. what well, since she was 23. So. Yeah. Um. I mean, she was last active on Facebook like in 2015, and some people were like posting public images of her Facebook online. And 2015, this was already. This was already ancient. She was her she was and ancient. friendship was was already ancient history. Oh yeah. But anyways, she had some. She had. She was still 
somewhat active on on social media uh, about five years ago, and 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 people had seen pictures of her living life and being happy. She was traveling, she was working. And she was uh, having relationships and stuff. Good on you, so, Megan. Good on you. Yeah, her her life. <laughs> su- suffice it to say, her her life went down a much different direction. Much this. different direction. If if I were going to tell the viewers about how yeah. how to what to take away from the Megan saga, it's uh, uh don't be a simp, and uh, yeah, don't be a simp, man. Don't, don't be a simp. Don't, do don't be don't a do simp. Uh, don't yeah. go on your Crayola paper and start drawing and proportional yeah. females about girls you like and then go yeah. it's megan because i can guarantee you i most girls most women i know they 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 would just automatically block you and they wouldn't be like yeah we can absolutely. give you another chance absolutely oh no no way man <laughs> yeah yeah well thank you so thank much you all. Uh, anyone who is listening anyone who lasted this long and gave enough of a shit to to make it to the ending here thank you for accompanying us on this podcast maiden voyage uh we hope that you'll join us again we're gonna be doing more of these we're gonna be discussing more sagas and we're gonna be discussing sagas that that are going to connect to the megan saga in one way or another oh yeah um this this was great. Uh, I I I'm Mark. I'm Tyken. That's Tyken. Here we are. Uh, I I just can't thank you enough for joining us on on this premiere podcast. We're we're gonna see you again, and we're gonna talk about a lot of good stuff. I'll see you guys soon. Yep, we are the Christorians of Alaska. We are signing off for the night. Goodbye. <laughs>